My name is Devin VP. I'm a commercial photographer with a YouTube channel. And almost two years ago, I made the risky move of jumping ship from my brand that I had spent thousands on with multiple cameras, lenses, and accessories, and decided to start a new journey of gear collection with the Sony a7 III. Like I said, what I do is commercial photography. The large majority of my work is for real estate photography with some weddings and portrait sessions scattered throughout my calendar. Up until this purchase, my main driver was the Canon 6D, of which I have two, and I've also had this Canon 70D as a backup for photo and my primary for video of the little video that I've done. I had been looking to upgrade my main camera for some time before deciding on the a7 III. I considered shelling out a whole $3,500 for the 5D Mark IV and also briefly considered the 6D Mark II due to its much lower price. But then a new Challenger entered the ring, one I thought I'd never consider until I read its long list of features, followed by a very competitive price relative to what Canon and Nikon was offering. To me, the a7 III was offering everything I needed and more for a very reasonable price of $2,000, same as the 6D Mark II at the time. The features that I valued most were the dynamic range, the 4K video, and the articulating screen. What really pushed me to jump ship though was the massive difference between what you can call features per dollar that was being offered by Canon and Sony. Canon seemed to be purposefully withdrawing features on their cameras to increase, I'm guessing, their bottom line, such as keeping 4K out of the 6D Mark II to push cells to the more expensive 5D Mark IV, or having you send in your 5D Mark IV and paying over $100 extra just to get log profiles. Both of these features should have been available at launch, I think, and probably could have been added via a software update sometime after launch. Meanwhile, Sony is launching cameras year after year with the latest and greatest features. It seemed clear to me that Canon didn't feel the need to innovate like Sony continues to do. So when I finally got my hands on the Sony a7 III, I noticed it was a bit bigger than I expected. I had actually assumed that it was going to be closer in size to the a6000 series, but it's actually noticeably larger, still much smaller and lighter than my Canon 60, which is a tad bit smaller than the 5Ds. The size was actually much easier to get used to than the buttons. The buttons feel really gummy, squishy, and unfortunately the shutter button seems to be the worst as it sometimes feels a bit fickle. If it's on a tripod and I'm trying to get a steady shot with a two second timer, I sometimes have to press it twice because it doesn't actuate the first time. But other times when it's handheld, it feels so sensitive that I accidentally press it twice when I mean to press it once, even when the drive mode is on single shot. So I'm not really sure what exactly is the issue there. One thing I noticed quite quickly was the battery life. I used to swap my battery after about two to three property shoots with the 6D. With the a7 III though, I managed to get five to six shoots without feeling the need to swap batteries. I believe this is actually partially due to the Sony showing an actual percentage rather than a fake three bar indicator so that I know exactly how much battery life I have, which makes me feel more confident using the battery until it's near empty. I first began using the camera only for my real estate shoots and there was an immediate and dramatic improvement to my shooting. For one, because of the articulating screen, I no longer had to bend down to get a good look at the display. That actually cured a ton of back pain. Two, the massive dynamic range upgrade changed the way I shoot entirely. Normally with the 6D, I would always get a three bracket shot of my scene for my ambient shots. That's an overexposed, underexposed, and a normally exposed shot. I then combine those three images to get a workable high dynamic range or HDR shot that I can use for my ambient image. I no longer feel the need to do that with the a7 III. This camera is able to capture enough detail in the lights and darks that I can pull up in processing from a single image that I can skip the bracketing and merging that I used to do with a 6D with every scene. This has saved me a ton of time, both on site and in processing. When it comes to weddings and portraiture, it took me a little longer to get comfortable with the a7 III. I noticed that there was a big difference in the way that it processed skin tones compared to the Canon. And for a while, I believed it to be worse color than the Canon. 
Now I actually find it better. I think my issue was adapting to it in my editing process and getting used to the color change because now I hate editing photos taken from my 60 because the skin tones just look so red. One thing that I really feel is an issue with the a7 III has got to be the screen resolution on the main display. I really didn't think it was going to be much of a problem because I figured I'd mostly use the viewfinder, but when you have an articulating screen that is just as accurate and responsive as a viewfinder, you're naturally going to focus on the screen more often. But the low resolution of the screen is actually a huge problem. Most of the time I can't tell what exactly is in focus unless I use the viewfinder just because of the low resolution of the main display. Depending on what I'm doing, that may just render the screen to be useless to me at times. Which sucks because then I have to change the way I use my camera again and it gets frustrating. Funny thing that's changed that I totally didn't expect was my grip. Because of the smaller size of the a7 III and its articulating screen, I now find myself naturally holding cameras with my thumb on the shutter button instead of my index finger. This is because I now shoot lower than eye level more often and it's easier on the wrist to hold that way, but I even find myself doing it with like the 6D at times, so just a completely different experience now. I actually figured that I would be more cautious with the a7 III because of the smaller grip, but I'm actually so much more comfortable holding this camera than I am the larger 6D that I'll often go strapless and you should know that I'm always strapped. I believe this new level of uh, Kemi grabby confidence is due to the significant weight difference. I just feel far less concerned about dropping it. This has also made me a lot more comfortable taking it out with me on personal time, something I used to rarely do. Other than that, menu is still super complicated, still trying to get used to that, but the profiles and favorites page has made that a lot easier. Video is great, still not something that I use very often as my 4,000 subscribers can tell. The few times I have uh, experimented with video, I am always impressed, never find myself wishing for more. But again, take that for a grain of salt, seeing as I am primarily a still photographer and for stills with my commercial and portrait work, this camera has been amazing. Up until it stopped being amazing, like just stopped completely. About 10 months into owning the camera, it just straight up died on me. No apparent cause. I was just starting a property shoot when one of the shots I took sounded a little weird, and then I tried to take another shot and the shutter just got stuck or something. And I got this error message. Also, I couldn't turn off the camera despite it telling me to do just that. I had to remove the battery. I looked around online to find a solution and I guess this issue isn't too uncommon. Some people have reported having this problem since the first A7 model and others reported it having again after being repaired by Sony. There's even a Facebook group dedicated to forming a class action lawsuit against Sony over this. But anyway, I was lucky enough to have just two months left of my one year warranty and because I bought from Best Buy, I was able to take it in store and have them find someone to repair it rather than sending it to Sony myself, paying for the shipping out of pocket and possibly paying up to $350 out of pocket for the repair like some people online have claimed to do. It took about a week to get it back. It's been working fine since, but I still get a little spooked every now and then if for whatever reason, it sounds like my shutter is acting a bit weird. Despite this, I actually still plan on picking up a second a7 III at some point. I've also decided to completely switch over to Sony. I've already picked up the a6400, which I'm currently using to film this entire video, and I'm trying to sell all of my Canon gear. Making this switch was definitely a risky decision, but I'm really glad I did it. Almost two years have passed, and this 6D just feels like a rotary phone every time I grab it. Like, I get my hands on it and I can't believe that I lug this around and shoots. It's so massive and just seems so antiquated. Not a bad camera, but definitely feel like I've got it upgrade. Let me know if you guys have any questions about my use with the a7 III and making the switch. Have any of you guys switched brands or have any of you guys decided ultimately not to switch brands? Let me know. I'd really like to know about your decision and why you come to it. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to be putting out some more stuff, as I always say. It doesn't mean anything anymore. But just, you know, stay tuned for some more uh, stuff. Stuff. Let's just, let's leave that stuff. No promises. Stay tuned for more stuff.